Hi everyone, I'm Ben Wilson. I'm currently a director with Alvarez and Marsal. And for the sake of this uh, interview, I will be the interviewee. Hi everyone, I'm Abigail. I am currently a business school student at Yale SOM, graduating in May and then working in private equity. Excited to be doing this uh, mock interview with Ben here. Um, and with that, we'll just we'll just jump right in. Ben, if you're ready, I have a, a prompt for you here. Um, so our client is General Motors, the American automotive behemoth, doing $172 billion in annual revenue as of 2023. GM has made a massive commitment to 100% phase-out production of internal combustion engines by 2035. Between 2020 and 2025, the company has invested $35 billion in electric vehicle and alternative fuel vehicle production. The strategy has so far shown mixed success with the market. In Q1 of 2024, for example, GM sales of EVs were down 20% from year over year in 2023. Comparatively, combustion engine pickup truck sales were up 24% in the same period. Roughly 3% of GM sales are EVs compared to 97% traditional combustion engines. GM has hired your firm to help evaluate the strategy and their 2035 goal. Specifically, they want to know if they should adjust their long-term strategy, as well as how they should maximize returns in the next two to five years. Okay, very interesting. Um, you know, fun fact, I've never actually owned a car myself, but have driven a few EVs, so hopefully that'll factor in. Um, okay, so overall objective, it seems like from GM's perspective, they want to evaluate the EV strategy they have towards that 2035 goal, very aggressive, complete phase out, complete shift in model, kind of a Netflix approach back in the day, but also maximizing returns in the next two to five years. So those could be conflicting with one another, but how, should they adjust it how they should? Kind of break down some information from there. So General Motors is our client, made that commitment towards 100% phase out. Invested 35 billion thus far, um, or going to be 2020 to 2025. So huge investment there. The EV sales are down. This is what I've certainly seen in the market as well, down 28%. But truck sales are up. I do know I've seen my commercials for an EV truck. Maybe that'll factor in. Um, but sales, just in terms of how they break down, 97% gas, 3% EVs. So they're very invested in gas. Um, short term, that could mean disaster if they went all in on EVs. Um, and they have 172 billion in um uh annual revenue right now okay so initially a few questions that maybe you can kind of help me out with to get my bearings um I, i'd be very curious what the overall goal is and what i mean by that the objective general motors to transition to evs is it environmental and sustainability so is it kind of this political angle are they trying to anticipate future market trends maybe a mix maybe other yeah, uh, great question. It, it's sort of a mix. So the transition to EVs for GM is driven both by sustainability goals and market trend predictions. Given the increasing regulatory pressures towards emissions, that's one of their reasons that they, they want to push towards EVs, but also changing consumer sentiment um, for similar reasons. Just there's general consumer senti sentiment to also care about emissions and whatnot. Um, and so GM views this both as a strategic necessity from a regulatory standpoint, but also a significant growth opportunity um, in terms of consumer preferences for, for EV vehicles. Gotcha. Okay. And I've certainly seen some of those kind of government subsidies. So I'm guessing that's kind of factoring into that regulation component. Um, fantastic. Helps me. Initial question also is regarding kind of the market. Um, and can you provide any more information on the market as it stands in currently 2024? So what are these con consumer preferences towards EVs versus combustion engines? What are kind of people saying about that? Yeah, happy to, to clarify there. So the overall market for EVs in 2024 is growing at a slower pace than initially anticipated, in part due to economic conditions and infrastructure issues that have come up with EVs. More consumers are showing interest in EVs, but there's a reluctance to fully commit because of upfront costs in this current kind of economic environment, as well as you know charging availability and some of the infrastructure issues that might arise from owning an EV. Yeah. Okay. That that makes perfect sense. Um, seems like some states have really doubled down on the infrastructure. Other states perhaps have not. Um, okay. And certainly, final final aspect I'd want to explore before maybe jumping into how I want to attack this problem 
is more financial in nature. So how does the unit economics of the EVs tend to compare with those of combustion engines? I know I tend to see prices on both ends, but as a non-car owner, I could certainly use some education on that front. Yeah, definitely. I don't have a detail right now, but high level um, EVs presently have a lower margin than traditional cars due to higher R&D and production costs. For example, so GV's average gross margin on combustion cars is around 10%, but right now only about 4% for EVs. Wow. Fantastic. That's very, very uh, informal. Um, let Give me like maybe a few minutes, kind of figure out my direction, then I'll come back and kind of brief you out. How does that sound? Sounds like a plan. Great. Okay, so I think I have an initial way I want to explore this, and I want to look at it from three different perspectives. I want to look at what are the options that are presented to us, and then what are the financial and non-financial considerations around them. So in terms of the options to kind of break it down, I saw it in three different ways. There's, you know, we can do the 2035 goal, we can be all in and meet GM's goal, also kind of drive towards that in the future. Um, we can do kind of more of a hybrid phase out, hedge our bets a bit in the short term just to better understand if the market shifts. And then also do a non phase out. So completely redirect from that 2035 goal. Maybe, you know, combustion engines and gas engines are the way of the future. But what I really want to understand is what does it mean for the two to five year mark in terms of maximizing profits? And, you know, is that going to align with the 2035 goal? Um, also, now kind of moving towards financial considerations, a lot of exploration I think is going to occur here. So, in terms of revenue first, what are the sales trends that are actually impacting the quantities over time? We've heard that EVs were down 20%, but trucks, I'm guessing trucks from the combustion engine were up 24%. So why is that occurring? Is it just a short-term slowdown or is it more long-term? If I think of someone like a Tesla, I'm thinking that might be occurring just because Elon Musk has been very vocal in the media, and maybe that's not an EV um, market impact. We also want to look at the price difference between EVs and gas. So EVs have had um, a lot of discounts associated with them due to more government subsidies. So is that impacting that kind of 4% versus 10% margin? Or is there just no more opportunity to increase in price? And then also what's the mix of product lines? I've seen everyone from Rivian coming out with more outdoor adventure vehicles to test the more of those high-end brand ones. So does that then uh, change how consumer sentiment looks at these vehicles? So that kind of breaks down how I wanna look at revenue in terms of cost. I think cost components going to be huge here, and it alludes to something that you were saying earlier about a lot of the high-end parts are just simply very costly. Um, so in terms of fixed costs, what's the actual cost to switch? So do we need to move people to higher cost areas? You saw this when Walmart wanted to go into more technology, they had to move people to Silicon Valley. I imagine there's going to be a huge component to that. Do we have to increase the skills and knowledge of people so getting more expensive people as well? And then also plant costs. Do we need more machinery, new machinery in order to meet this 2035 goal if we're converting 97% of our production now towards that 3% that's electric? Um, and then also variable cost component, I'll reference back to it, but the increased cost of parts. So the semiconductors, the electric components, the software costs as well. With the CHIPS Act, moving more semiconductors onto American soil, that might change things a bit, but in the short term, at least that kind of two to five year span, that's probably not the about time that they're going to need to set up those plants. Um, and then also is there are economies of scale that will eventually we'll find in this new EV market. If only 3% of our vehicles are made EV right now, we probably haven't found that at the moment. But the big question here is, is there greater incremental profits that can be squeaked out in the EV market in the next two to three, two to five years to increase that overall market? Um, or is it really just going to make sense to stay more towards the combustion engines? Okay, so non-financial considerations, certainly going to be some interest here. Um, in terms of the market, what's industry regulations and political changes occurring? You referenced some of these. Is there more that's going to occur? We're in election year also. So Biden, I would imagine, if you're blue, going to be more EV oriented. And if someone like Trump comes into office, is that going to completely shift? And should we continue to hedge our bets just in case that occurs? That kind of builds into this um, economic landscape as well, but something you'd reference at the beginning, infrastructure limitations. I know some place like West Virginia only actually has two to three kind of like state-based uh, charging ports compared to California. We're probably getting one every couple of miles. Um, and so how is that impacting kind of the size and market in each individual state? Customers, I want to understand what product lines they uh, prefer and are associated with. 
What are they actually looking for? And geographically, how do those purchasing patterns uh, change? And then finally, competition. So I referenced Tesla a few times, but I want to know Tesla, Rivian, what all these kind of small market players, there's a few coming from China as well, what they're doing, how they're targeting the market, how they're performing as well. Is it generally market underperformance or just GM? Um, you know, if I had to think about kind of where I want to uh, start from all three of these, I really probably want to look at the financial component and first looking at how have we trended in terms of sales? Um, do they have any kind of information on that thus far? We don't have a detail on the sales breakdown, but I have some general market sales data that that I can give you and would love to have you analyze here. Um, so the EV market in 2023 in the US saw 1.2 million car sales, which was a 70% annualized growth rate or kegger since 2019. But part of the slowdown experienced by GM in Q1 2024 has been due to an overall EV market growth slowdown. So while analysts had been predicting another year of 70% growth, uh, forecasts are being revised down to 50%. So I have a couple questions for, he for you here is thinking about this, how big will the market for EVs be in the U.S. in three years if that 70% growth rate stays the same versus how big will it be if we have a 50% growth rate for the next three years? And then if we can assume that GM has a 5% market share of the EV market, what will their um, market share be or how many cars will they sell in three years in the 70% scenario versus the 50% growth scenario? Okay, fantastic information. So kind of goal or question of this, I want to know your three-year market at a high potential growth versus more mid to low, high being 70%, mid to low being 50. And then if we own 5% of the market share, what does that look like for sales? And just some breakdown information before I dive in. 2023, we had US sales of 1.2 million. Um, and that was 70% Kager since 2019. So hence the 70% uh, high growth scenario. Annual EV market slowdown makes sense. And then that 5% EV market share. Okay. So what I'm thinking about doing is breaking it down in terms of year one, two, three, and then look at in terms of 50%, 70% scenario. So almost like a matrix. And I'll just kind of walk you through each step. Okay. So let's do the 50% scenario first. Um, and if at any point I am saying something correct, please jump in. Otherwise, I'm just going to kind of keep moving through. Okay. So for year one, we had the 1.2 million in sales that you had referenced. And we're doing the 50% scenario first. So at 50%, that's 12 divided by two. So 600,000. Um, I'm gonna jump now to year two. I'm gonna take that over. So 600,000 times uh, the 1.5, because we're gonna grow at 50%. And so that's gonna give me 900K. And so now I'm gonna move to year three. And so I'm gonna take that 900K. I'm gonna also multiply it once more by that 1.5, that 50% growth. And I'm gonna get about 1.35 million. Okay, and now I'm gonna get the total of that. So I'm gonna do my 1.2 that I started with. I'm gonna do plus the 600K from year one. I'm gonna do the 900K from year two, and I'm gonna do the 1.35 from year three. And that is going to give me just about 4 million. Would you mind if I round to 4 million? That's great, 4 million is a great answer. Perfect. Okay. So let's use four million. So that's under the 50% scenario. Let's move to the 70% or semi high growth scenario. So again, I'm going to start with my 1.2 million and just kind of work the same way. So times 70%. That gets me about 800,000. Okay. I'm going to take that 800,000 and move it over now. So 800,000 times 1.7, similar approach. That gets me 1.4 million. So I'm going to move that over 1.4 million times 1.7 gets me about 2.5 million. Okay, now let's add those up. The easier part, 1.2 million plus 800,000 from year one plus 1.4 million from year two and plus 2.5 million from year three. And that is going to give me, again, I'm going to um take some creativity and round here a bit but about six million in cars sold in year three how does that look to you perfect 
Okay, so we've got 4 million cars sold in by year three in a 50% scenario, 6 million uh, by that 70% scenario. But then there was that second part of the question that I want to make sure I answer, which is if we have 5% of the market share, what does that then look like? So let's do 50% again first. So at 50%, we're going to say 5% of the 4 million that we calculated. So um, that's going to give us 200,000 cars sold. And okay, well, let's jump to 70%. And then I might need to make an assumption here as well. Um, so 5% of 6 million under that 70% scenario, it's going to give me 300,000 cars sold. So we have 200,000 versus 300,000. So a difference right now of 100,000 vehicles under each scenario for GM. Um, I want to calculate what this might look like also in terms of potential car price or actual sales. So top line revenue. Um, I'm going to take some creative freedom here as a non-car owner. Is it fair to say that the average price would be about 50,000? Yeah, that's a good average price estimate. Okay, let's use that. Then. So 200,000 times 50,000, it's actually five times two, and I'll just add the zeros on. So that's going to give me $10 billion. I'm going to do something similar then for the 70% scenario. So the 300,000 times 50,000. So that gets me about 15, so 10 billion versus 15 billion. So we have a 5 billion difference and 100,000 car difference between those two scenarios of just 20% difference in terms of market growth over those three years. Um, so if I had to kind of take a step back and, and try and put this in perspective, GM, you told me, has 172 billion in revenue annually. So if I think about where 5 billion falls into that, the 5 billion difference, it's about 3% of, of their overall revenue. It seems fairly critical. Um, it's not something that's going to necessarily turn the tides during earnings season, but it's it's big for them. And if I also think about kind of where EVs are and kind of the maturity scale, it still, it still seems like it's a land grab. It still seems like you're fighting to try and get growth and push out all these other um players in the market that are trying to, to trying to become relevant. So for GM, I do think this is very relevant. Um, and I suppose I'd want to dive further into this and understand what might fluctuate or change that difference between the 50% and 70%, maybe for the market, but also what GM can do to, to really control that. Have they given us any kind of information on the car details or what GM has for their cars currently, or even details more on the market growth itself broken down by the players. Yeah, we do have both of that, um, both of okay. data on both of those topics. So I'll go ahead and share an exhibit here with you um, where we kind of get the GM breakdown by car type, as well as some market trends um, by player. Can you see my screen okay? Yep, yep, I'm with you. Great. Okay. So we'd love to just get your thoughts on on what you see here and, and what are some potential implications for GM. Okay, interesting. So um let me let me kind of break it down one after another. So I'll start with the the top uh stack bar chart. So we're looking at what are the EV sales in absolute numbers versus it looks like um the overall kind of market percentage and how much they may own in that market. And we're looking at this across quite a few players, probably maybe almost 10. Um, the first thing that strikes me is Tesla is clearly the um, the primary player in this. They're that bright red color, they're gobbling up the vast majority of it. They've also, it seems like, kind of stretched a lot of that growth as well. The next thing I'm trying to understand is where GM falls in this. So the General Motors is a bit of a light lavender color. You know, if you start, if you look at them starting in May, they don't even exist. And if I kind of like track them across by February, um, it looks like they started to gain market share. January seeing a slightly larger uh, bubble, but February, they're already starting to kind of lose some of that share as well. I'm just going to make some notes here. Um, yeah, so the, the big takeaway there is a lot of players, no real one controller beyond Tesla. So what I would expect to see if it was a mature market, it'd be three to four players really able to kind of shift the market presence outside of Tesla number of people trying to understand is this still speculative or if they can actually gain market share and gm it looks like is one of those players as well um maybe i can jump down to the bottom i'll give you my observations then we can see if there's some key takeaways okay so bottom chart it looks like we're looking at a year-over-year -year comparison from 23 q1 to 24 q1 for gm 
and looking at this by their EV models. Um, and what's interesting, you know, I'm initially just looking at kind of that percent volume change. Um, I'm seeing the Bolt is down. Uh, fun fact, the only EV car I think I've driven is the Bolt and I actually really liked it, but apparently I'm not the typical consumer here. Um, the Hummer EV, you know, massive change. We're seeing a bit for this Lyric as well. Um, but that's actually something that's really, um, I'm pr primarily focused on is this Atelium kind of down at the bottom. So it does include Bolt, massive growth there as well. Um, absolutely enormous growth. So maybe that's kind of a change in market. They're moving away from the Bolt to this other platform perhaps. Okay, so what are kind of my key takeaways from the top and bottom? So highly fragmented market up top. Tesla is primarily the main controller of this. No one else really has a material market percentage beyond them. Um, but it also looks like Tesla might be having hit the hardest. So if you see them compared to say December to February, it's looking like they had a significant drop, almost like 40,000. Um, so that could spell disaster for this whole industry or it could be opportunity for GM. I don't know if I necessarily know yet, back to my prior point when I was doing my framework, it could be something that Elon is saying or it could just be market shifts. Okay. Kind of my takeaway from the bottom is it looks like there might be an opportunity since this move from the Bolt to this Atelium platform. So it seems like maybe GM has finally found that product market fit. And this Atelium model is really where the consumers are going. I mean, we've seen kind of a 10x growth in year one. And it looks like those EVs that are using this model could really show some good future potential. Um, so this is fascinating for me to see. And I suppose what I'd want to dive into then is it seems like there's opportunity in the EV market, potentially. Um, what also is kind of like stringing me along, though, is at the beginning, you had referenced in the data um, something about a truck. And like this light truck, this potential for the truck um, is still growing. I think it's like 24% versus the drop in EVs at 20%. Do we have any more data in that? Because I don't want to just like give up on combustion engines, even though the potential market EVs might exist. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, just looking at this, there are a couple, you know, truck EVs on the bottom chart. So we have some growth that we're seeing in the Silverado and the Hummer EV pickup and SUV, but focusing on the pickup, there's likely been some growth for, for GM um, here with, with trucks as well. Um, but I have a chart on overall U.S. light truck retail sales from 1980 to 2023. Um, and I'm just wondering if you can take a look at this and let me know what the implications may be for GM. Yeah, yeah. Um, so huge fan of Statista. Um, and what I initially see is this massive drop that we had in the 08 kind of recession. Otherwise, feels like a pretty solid trend upward. Um, and my assumption is, is it fair to estimate that the light truck is indeed a combustion engine or, or a gas engine? Yes, that's fair. Okay. Okay. Um, the reason I ask, I know I've seen, uh, again, these commercials for the EV truck of the future. Um, and maybe that's going to be a strategy that we can, can factor in here. Um, yeah. So what's very interesting, we're seeing this immediate trend up in light truck sales outside of that dip. But more recently in the past, call it 2018, maybe to 2022, so four or five years, uh, we've seen it kind of stabilize. And I don't know if that is given the um, COVID period and kind of everything that's uh, occurred thereafter, or if it's simply that light trucks are finally kind of seeing their day, they're maturing, they're fizzling out. Overall market is about 12 million. That's kind of where we've stabilized roughly. Um, and that five-year kind of stop. Um, yeah, I'd be very curious how this is balancing them with EV markets. We've seen EV markets drop slightly while light markets have kind or light trucks have kind of stabilized. Um, what is interesting though, kind of looking back on the data that, that we have calculated previously, if EVs do hit that high growth of that 70% scenario that we had discussed, um, by three years, and if um, trucks kind of stay stabilized around the, the 12 million. Um, what's so interesting is that EVs could become about 60% of this light truck market, which means that if we're trying to maximize in that two to five years, 
Um, EVs probably won't be all of it, considering we're only getting 5% of that market share, even if we were aggressive and get up to 10%. Um, but it looks like EVs do have a potential, granted some assumptions at play. Um, what this is kind of telling me though is, given this growth, I imagine it's not gonna completely stabilize at 12 million, it would be aggressive to move away from combustion engines or gas trucks and gas automotives at this point. I think it's too speculative of a market in EVs to say that, um, but that's just from seeing this data and, and the past data. That's, that's kind of where this is pushing me though. Yeah, some great observations there. And one question here, just specific from, from GM about how they should allocate their, you know, R and D or uh, investment budget um, mm -hmm. towards kind of EVs versus regular combustion. So at the start of the year, GM had allocated five billion in spend on EV research and marketing. This is outside of production costs, so purely those like R and D um, marketing development costs to to push it out to the market and, and help accelerate growth. They had similarly allocated five billion in spend on combustion engine research and marketing. But with the Q1 results in, business unit leaders for pickup trucks are making the case that some of the EV spend should be redirected towards combustion engines. What is your best kind of recommendation for the way to split the 10 billion in R&D and marketing um, investments in 2024? That's a, that's a really great question. Um, and I imagine a question that they are really struggling to answer. Um, I think it's too early to to convert over. Um, so kind of the hypothesis I, I, I came in with that I think I'm going to hold to is a bit of a hybrid approach. And the reason being, I'm going to kind of let me lay out both sides of the equation and hopefully this can can support my point. So you have the combustion engine, which in the short term to maximize that two to five year profitability goal, which is one half of our initial goal coming in. It seems like we need the combustion engines in order to do that. It's 97% of our current business. So in order to have that short-term success, we can't necessarily get rid of it. When Netflix completely pivoted over from DVD mailing to digital, they saw a drop in the short term. And it seems like we don't want that sh short-term drop. Um, also, EV infrastructure is not there yet. So I know West Virginia, for instance, I gave that example. Multiple other states don't necessarily have the charges in place. Nor do I really think that those consumers have found that they want to move over yet. And it still seems like EVs are a very minority share of the market. Um, there's still a huge demand for gas and trucks, hence why EVs are the minority. Um, and as someone that comes from colder weather, you know, I'm sure you've experienced this as well, the EVs are suboptimal in that weather. Um, so that's kind of my argument for combustion engines. But I think there's also an argument for EVs, which is leading me towards this hybrid. Uh, I still think EVs are the way of the future. Um, they're fantastic, again, with our kind of push in politics and society towards more sustainable forms of energy. Um, GM is large enough to pursue this on the side in a non-speculative way, but to be investing into it through their R&D. It has promising demand. We've seen this from moving from the non-bolt model to this Altilium, I think is what it was called. Um, so there's fantastic potential there. Clearly, we're finding that at least some consumers want it. And decreasing cost, I think, is on the horizon, given the chips deal, given some of this infrastructure being sourced on country or in country. So I think this hybrid approach makes sense. Don't give up on combustion engines in the short term. Stick with that two to five years. Continue to try and sense the market. Um, but moving towards that, that goal in the long term, we can keep EVs in production, keep investing in R&D, try and get them to a more sustainable point. And hopefully in two to five years, we're still maximizing profit, but we're better able to understand what consumers want. And then also if the market is moving that way. So it's, not, it's like a typical consulting answer, like it depends, but I'm gonna go with hybrid. Yeah, that's a great recommendation. Um, just kind of one follow-up for you. If they do go hybrid, sort of like keep this 50-50 path, are you at all worried about the split focus causing confusion internally about their ambitions towards EVs or confusion with the market in terms of are they actually fully invested in EVs if they're still investing in kind of traditional combustion growth? Can they really, you know, do 50-50 um, effectively? 
Yeah, it's a really great question. I think, you know, for the majority of the business, they have to stay focused on what's the cash cow, what's moving the needle, which is combustion engines. I think Apple's a good example of this. You know, for so long, probably for the past 10 years, they were able to start investing in what the EV car would look like. They eventually, you know, cut it and decided to move on from it. But they had that R&D going on while the rest of the business was still pumping out iPhones, was still pumping out headphones, was still doing kind of like the core business function. So I think if you keep an R&D area focused on it, you know, you're in uh, earnings calls, you're not drawing a lot of attention to it, but it's something that you have going on. So I think yes, but it, I, it certainly has to be a clear line in the sand. Either you're focused on EVs and that R&D or your traditional business. And I think they can hopefully do that also by moving people towards these areas of the country that are more focused on technology and R&D. So move that team to a Silicon Valley or somewhere more technology focused and have them more or less removed in the short term from the rest of the business. Yeah, those are very great points. Uh, so the the main client or the sponsoring client just walked in to our team room and they're just looking for a recommendation on how GM should update their strategy and tactics given the recent slowdown in sales of EVs. So wondering if you can quickly summarize for the, the client what we've talked about today and what your recommendation is going forward. Absolutely. Um, so with the initial goal of evaluating the EV strategy against the 2035 goal and balancing that with your kind of two to five year profitability goals, I'd, recommendation, I'd recommend still moving towards the 2035 goal and tr transitioning away in the long term from combustion engines, but hedging in the short term. And I'd invest in both EV performance and in um, this kind of EV model for two reasons in the long term. One, Tesla, who is the market leader, is currently stumbling. Whether that's due to the market or whether due to leadership is still kind of up for grabs, but it allows us to potentially go in and gain some of their market share and their current consumer base. Second, also we need to nail production and marketing of this new platform that is rolling out. It seems to have high growth with our current consumer base, also drawing in new consumers, so there's certainly something there in order to differentiate us in a crowded market. Um, there are risks though. So risk in the EV market, uh, potentially slowing down, infrastructure not being invested at a state and local government level. So there are potential barriers um, to making this a feasible market in the next 10 years or 11 years. Um, we can mitigate, mitigate this though. Doing this hybrid approach allows us to continue to maximize short-term profitability while not being too invested into this in long term. So if the government decides to pull back on this, or if the market decides to pull back, we're still in a position where we can continue to thrive in the short and long term with combustion engines. As the next step, though, we'd love to help you with your production and marketing for this new platform and help to make sure that beyond the five-year mark, we can actually hit that 2035 goal. That's a great recommendation. All makes sense. Thank you so much, Ben. Um, Thank you, Abby. Enjoy doing this case with you and, and take care. Hey everyone, it's Kenton Gavesti here, the founder of Rocket Blocks. Thank you so much for watching this mock interview video. I hope you found it informative and helpful as you are getting ready to prepare for your own interviews and hopefully landing that job offer you are excited about. We have a ton of great content on the Rocket Blocks channel coming out on a weekly basis, mock interviews, mini lessons, and chats with our Rocket Blocks experts. So if you haven't subscribed yet already, please do so. There is a big red button below. And if you hit that, you'll get all of our content as soon as it comes out. Thanks for watching and have a great day.